So somebody else modeled uh, up a um, model up a, a towel rack holder kind of thing. And um, and how do you do that? And I thought that was awesome. Uh, whoever modeled this one up and shared it on Singiverse, thank you so much. But of course, um, let's model one of these up. And um, as you can see, I turned the printer on because I thought maybe we just fire up the printer, take it all the way to, to the end. How do you like that? Good. <clears throat> so looking at Joe's, let me get a sip of coffee here. Looking at Joe's tile um, tile holder, clearly 3D printed. I don't really know how big this is. I don't like. I haven't tested this out, so so bear with me, right? Like I'm just. Uh, oops, that was the piggy bank we did. Ah, oh, where's the other picture? That one. Um, I'm just gonna go with this, what I think might work, and then we'll kind of like have to uh, to see. I'll 3D print mine. <laughs> Joe, you 3D print yours. Anybody else? Anybody else 3D printing those? Please send me a picture of it. Um, Lars.christianrodas.com. That will, you would absolutely make my day. So inside of Fusion, let's get out of the leaf here and move on. Um, so when you're looking at this and you're trying to model something up like this, this can be kind of, I think this is a little difficult. Like my brain, um, you know, everybody, everybody thinks that I know all the answers. I for sure don't know all the answers. And when you're looking at something like this and you're trying to figure out how do you model it up, it can be really, really hard. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, all right, I can model up the flat, the, the flat face. And then I maybe need like two walls that is kind of like collapsing in. Um, there's a lot of ways to model this up inside of Fusion and there is no right way. When I see something like this, and I'm thinking about, I gotta model this up in one of my videos, I really try to think about how can I add some value to you? Um, because there's no one right way. And I wanna kinda like inspire you because some of you guys, I hope, are gonna model one of these up and send me a picture of it. But some of you guys are also like, this is stupid. I don't have a 3D printer. I don't give a hoot. So, but just so you don't turn off, I'm trying to, to um, to do it in a way that you might find it interesting. What I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna model this one up in a reverse fashion of what I think most people, how most people will model this one up in. I have an approach that I call the manufacturing approach. And, and I really like that one whenever you kind of second guess what you wanna do because like I said, we could model up this flat triangular shape, the bottom, the flatness that goes against the wall. That might be easy enough. Um, but then we got these two walls that kind of is going to come in at an angle. And that kind of gets complicated when you get down to where it points toward the center of the triangle. So what I do with the manufacturing approach is I'm thinking about if I had a block of steel almost, how could I make this? Um, and that would just be starting to cutting away at it. Um, but then I thought that's too easy. So here is a trick that you maybe not have seen. I'm actually going to start out by modeling up the triangle from this face here. All from kind of looking down from this direction. And hopefully some of you guys find this useful. I'm going to start on my, on my, face here and I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm going to do it out of whack. I'm going to make it the worst triangle you've ever seen because then I'm going to go ahead and use these constraints. I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to say this constraint. I'm going to make sure that this here is horizontal. Then I'm looking at it. I'm saying, where is this origin? I want kind of like that to be a point of it. So I'm going to go up and say midpoint. The midpoint of this one to this point. Boom. Okay, that is good. Now I gotta give it a length. D for dimension. And I think I'm gonna make this 80 millimeters. Probably sounds about right. Okay, now I see that this is flipping around. This should definitely somewhere be uh, isometrical. So one thing I could do is I could draw a line from this midpoint to this intersection, and then I could use another 
make that line vertical, right? There you go. Now it's going up and down like this. Now I can do another default dimension from this line to this here. And let's do that at 35. I'm just rounding it up. This sketch is now fully defined. You all will agree with me with that, right? Because it's black. So what I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at it from this side right here. If we're looking at this image, I am literally looking at it like this from the top. Okay? Let me show you what I'm going to do next. This is where I hope somebody is going to be like, wow, I've never thought about doing this. That's what I hope. <laughs> I am now going to finish the sketch. I'm going to do a offset a plane this length way here away from my triangle. This length here right now is this length of where the point where it's going to meet down in the intersection down here. I don't know how long that's going to be, but I think that maybe 60 might be good. So let me type that in. Make that 60. Okay, now I'm going to open up a sketch on that plane. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit P for project. And I'm going to steal that center point right there. That's all I'm going to leave in that sketch is that stolen point from there. Then if I go ahead and say, I want a loft between this sketch to this point and I hit okay. You see what I've just created? <clears throat> I've just created that triangle. I hope somebody right now is like, whoa, I would never have thought of that. So we have that flat against the wall. If I spin it around, we're looking from it from the front. Now, if you look at the images, that is looking at it from the front. We don't have the opening. It's not hollow. It's just that solid manufacturable blank. Okay. Kind of cool so far. Now I want to open it up and make it hollow. I'm going to use the shell command for that. I'm going to click the shell command. I'm going to click on the top of the rectangle and I'm going to give it a thickness. I'm going to make mine four millimeters maybe thick. See that? Now it's hollow. That shell command, that command up there, it's now is hollow. It literally what it does, the shell command in itself is pretty neat. The shell command, I clicked on a face on that top face up there and it makes that open and then it literally um, makes a thickness of that four millimeters on all the other world all the other sides what means that if we go in and do something like a um, oh where is our section analysis if we're doing a section analysis of that back face see how it's actually a tapered cut through Okay. All right. So that is that. Now I think I'm ready to create that opening that we see right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to go in and open a sketch on that inside face. I'm just going to spin it around here. So we're looking at it from the top down. And don't forget, I've used this in a couple of, of my videos. Don't forget this sliding tool that will kind of slide the box on check so we can see where we're sketching. So now I'm going to create a line and I'm going to place that line. I don't know where this is going to be, but I'm just going to kind of like sketch down here. I'm going to make this flat. I'm going to sketch up to there. And I'm going to kind of like close that off. I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to say that line midpoint Make sure to select that line so that origin, right? I can create another line from this to this midpoint. 
And I could say that I want to make that horizontal. Okay. Somebody right now, I can't remember who emailed me that I don't make these construction lines and that's bad modeling habit. Yeah, I maybe disagree. Just had to get that out of the way. I'm going to make this. I don't know what this is going to be. I'm going to try to make it fall, maybe. And I'm going to go ahead and make this length here. Maybe I'll just leave it at 30 for right now. And if I turn that slicing off, we have the scats. And now if we hit Q for press pull, and we cut through here, what do we end up with? We end up with that opening. I hope I haven't lost you, right? Now, I don't know if this is good enough that when you take that towel and you throw that in there, it looks like you kind of like take the corner and you kind of stuff it in there that's going to lock it in. I can't wait to, to test this out uh, myself. I'm just going to 3D print it. Um, I'm not sure if this is enough, but I think I'm going to leave it like this for right now um, and see this. Now, on this video, you would now put a couple of holes through it, right? So you could go in here and you could use the whole command and sketch holes or whatever. Um, I'm actually not going to do that because I actually my towels is hanging over the edge of the stove. So I actually think that I'm, I don't think I want a hole to drill through. Um, I actually think maybe I'm just taking some some packing tape or like some double sided tape and put on the back. Maybe test that out. But what I want to do in the end is, and I'm waiting with this to the end, we want to add some fillets. I'm probably going to break up my fillets a little bit um, and maybe say internal fillets here on the outside, maybe. Uh, I have always found that that breaking your fillets down makes a lot of sense. I start out with one millimeter fillets. That might be, be decent. Maybe we try two millimeter fillets. Um, I like to break it down into to multiple fillets um, to so I don't normally fill it the entire model at first I like to have kind of multiple fillets in here see how this is if we make this one two millimeters that might not be good enough one millimeter fillet here it seems like it was failing down here. Um, and then maybe we go and we add some outside fillets on the third one. And let's try that at two. Another two and one. Yeah, I think I like that. Maybe we make this one one, two and see how that looks. Make them all one. We can play around with this. So now we can make this one higher because it doesn't really interfere. Don't make it that. Make it two. All right. So do whatever you want to do here in the case that you want to do some holes, whatever, whatever you want to do. But this is my attempt on trying to make uh, the towel holder. Whoops. Sorry. We're going to get to this one. Uh, my towel holder I lost my towel holder this one uh, the towel holder here would be my attempt so let's get back into fusion and uh, then we're gonna go and do tools we should probably actually save it now let's hit save and call it towel holder I hope this is useful for you save it and let's go make 3d prints I'm gonna, I normally have mine set at medium. I have the Ultimaker behind me, so I'm gonna use the Cura. Hit okay to that. And the Cura fire up here. Hopefully, I just downloaded the latest version of Cura before we did this, <laughs> this long live stream. Come on, Cura. It's opening up on the other page. Let's give it a second. And there we go. There is Cura. Uh, Cura just they just changed the layout. I haven't really looked at this much, uh, but they this menu used to be over here. That's kind of cool. 
you can see I have generic PLA. Um, I don't know if we need support material for this. Let's just slice a button down here. Slice it up on the Ultimaker. We can go in and do it. It's going to take two hours and 20 minutes. I have like a cool little verification here. You're going to see that build it up. Um, I think I'm just going to leave that. Print over network. Print over network. I don't know what that is going. Sending data to printer. Turn back to me. It looks like that that thing is waking up over there. So that is uh, is cool. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna see the result of this because I am done live streaming before this. But um, now the three D printer should start hopefully moving around. Um, I thought that was maybe just exciting to do that. <sighs> Thank you, Joe, for sending that. I hope that was useful. I hope this was just another way to do this. You know. Like I'm doing these videos, I'm not always doing it the most specific way for that thing. Just trying to get the juices flowing. You left thumbs up if this was good, thumbs down if this was stupid. I hope you learned something. That's really all I'm trying to do.